Drone times are so short because ultimately it comes down to the drone's weight to power ratio. Now, manufacturers are improving on this year on year. For example, the DJI Mavic 2 uh, Air 2 has about a 40 minute flight time, which is insane compared to where it was just sort of like five or six years ago. Um, I have the DJI Mavic Air series drone and it's fantastic. They recommend that you should be able to get about a 20 minute flight time out of this, but I very rarely get the full 20 minutes if I'm honest. It's normally between about 15 to about 17 minutes that I can get this drone. Um, up in the air for and ultimately there's only a few things that really determine how long and how much longer you can fly your drone. And in this video, we're gonna go through the reasons why uh, the drone battery limits the flight time and also the things you can do to extend your flight time that I've used and I think are very useful. This video is based on an article on droneflyingpro.com, so go check it out on that website. I'll put a link in the description and as always, Give this video a thumbs up if it's been useful. Drones are incredibly power hungry. The amount of energy it takes to keep a drone hovering at a certain height is insane. And really, the amount of energy that the battery can store has been improved dramatically over the last few years due to the introduction of so-called lithium polymer batteries. Now, you may be familiar with like lithium ion batteries. That's the sort that you find in like laptops and uh, other rechargeable devices that don't need to be light. And they are super heavy. The thing about the polymer composite is that they are incredibly light and they are incredibly sort of power uh, dense which means they can hold a lot of energy now the problem is is that they do require a fair bit of maintenance and special care because the polymers can degrade if they're not treated right and if the maintenance isn't kind of up to the highest standards um, but essentially the the amount of energy that's in the battery has to go through all of the electric electronic components in this drone. So not only is the drone having to keep itself sort of stable using the motors and the propellers, which are very sort of uh, energy hungry, but also it's got other stuff going on. It's got loads of internal sensors that need powering, like the um, inertial measurement unit, the compass, the GPS stuff, as well as the camera and gimbal. The gimbal will respond by moving in relation to the drone's movement and all of that is incredibly power hungry. So I'm actually just very amazed that uh, this drone does stay in the air for 15 minutes, considering that inside there are a whole range of instruments that need power to perform correctly. Um, and yes, that's why, you know, look how complicated these things are. I'm just amazed. I remember an old school teacher of mine when digital cameras first came out, she was like, I can only take about 10 photos with rechargeable batteries, but I don't mind because there's a lot going on inside. And now I kind of understand her, what she means. Another reason your flights may not be as long as you want them to be is because of the smart battery. Now the smart battery is that, it's smart. It's got its own little brain, its own little computer in there, which is essentially just assessing the charging rates, the discharge rates, and it also keeps this battery very safe. Now the thing about the smart battery is that it will discharge over time, even if it's not plugged into your drone. And that's because lithium polymer batteries, if you store them at 100% capacity for a long period of time, the polymers will will degrade inside, which will mean that uh, the lower operating voltage will be surpassed, which means that the drone battery will no longer hold any charge, will be able to be charged. So it's a kind of always on the lookout for itself, trying to keep itself um, in the best storage condition possible. And that's normally between about 40 and 60% uh, fully charged, which means that as soon as you take this thing off the charger, it will start to discharge very, very slowly. And the thing about that is as soon as you go to have a look, this is on two at the moment, um, you'll notice that that uh, unless you charge your batteries like the night before your flight, your drone battery will slowly start to discharge. Now I've not had too much of an issue. As long as I charge it within about two to three days of flying my drone, I do get you know an, a reasonable flight time. I don't really notice any different. But if I've had this battery sat around for a week, I do notice that when I turn it on, it's maybe about 85 to 90% full, and that can kind of limit my flight time by two or three minutes. So uh, definitely check your smart battery. Make sure that you charge up your battery just before you head out to fly, but make sure that it's cold before you 
fly because that can also damage the battery as well. Aggressive flying is another reason why some people get very low flight times. Now, the thing about all of the uh, figures that are sort of given out by the manufacturers for drones is they tend to give the maximum flight time in a sneaky way by just saying that there's no wind and it hovers. Now, in the real world, drones don't do that. They move, they twist. And the thing is, once you've built up momentum, say, going forward, and you want the drone to stop, it does have to put some back sort of pressure on its flight. So to overcome that kind of like forward momentum um, and that takes an awful amount of energy. So just like driving, you know, you can conserve petrol and conserve energy just by accelerating slowly. You can change the way that the drone interacts with the joysticks in the DJI Go 4 app. You can change the EXP settings, which essentially sort of causes the drone to not move as fast in the smaller stages of moving the joystick. Um, and I found that that has certainly helped me um, increase the amount of uh, flight time that I get. Now, uh, aggressive flying can mean that you're also sort of like whizzing as far as you can, as hard as you can. Now, there is a natural limit on these drones when they're not in sport mode, so it will only go so fast. But the thing is, when you're in sport mode, which on a lot of drones is just a simple physical switch or a software button that you click across, um, that can actually improve the responsiveness of the drone to the joystick movements, which means that as soon as you move that joystick, boom, the drone's moving, and that can use a lot of energy because you're always kind of working against your own momentum. So don't, don't fly aggressively unless that's what you want to do. Um, but if you want to extend your flight times, just make sure you're not in sports mode and that you're not sort of like, you know, trying to counteract your own momentum all the time. Go easy on those controls. And if if you find that hard, change your EXP settings. And the last thing that can really impact flight time is weather conditions and wind. Now, obviously, while this drone is flying, it's using its GPS sensors to stay in a fixed altitude, hold and hover. So it's just there. But of course, once the wind hits it, it does have to kind of counteract. And the inertial measurement unit in here is always kind of like, just like trying to work out, okay, well, where am I going? And the flight controller is going, well, I'm going this way a little bit, so I'll pull back. And essentially it's doing all these calculations, many hundreds of calculations a second, just to kind of keep you in a steady um, state when your hands are off the controller. And the thing about that is any wind or environmental factors can easily cause this drone to work harder. So if you um, are flying in a coastal situation like I do a lot here in Australia, I do find that the drone sometimes is up at an angle like this, or it's kind of being buffeted around a little bit, and that can severely impact your um, flight time as well. So, you know, in some of the windiest conditions, I may only get about 12 minutes out of this flight and, uh, you know, that's just part of the uh, fun and games of operating a drone, I guess. You can increase the amount of flight time a number of ways. Really, the first way is look after your batteries. Look after your batteries really well. Now, go check out my other video where I talk about battery health and extending your flight times. But ultimately, just make sure that you look after this well. Don't let it go through extreme fluctuations of temperatures. In Australia, I have to be really careful about leaving this in a backpack on a car um, because, you know, the cars can easily reach like 80 degrees C on a really hot day, which is insane. So, um, yeah you know, extremes of temperature and also allowing it to cool down before and after use. These can get a little bit hot as soon as you use them. And also don't leave them fully charged um, uh, when you are going to store them. Um, and you can check your DJI health um, using the DJI Go 4 app and uh, the batteries will tell you when they're done. And it's, I think, about three to five hundred charge cycles, you definitely need to replace it anyway. So look for any swelling, make sure there's no issues. But ultimately, these smart batteries um, need a little bit of extra care because of the lithium polymer composite that's inside. So they're not as robust as like a laptop battery, but with the right little bit of care, they will last a long time. One of the easiest ways to actually extend your flight time is just buy more batteries. I've done that. I've got two batteries, one's up there, one's down here. Um, and that, you know, doubles my flight time immediately. Now, I very rarely go super far away with my DJI Mavic Air. I'm always kind of, you know, within a few hundred meters of where I am, maybe up to a kilometer um, if I'm being adventurous. But it's enough time to come back, land, swap out the drone battery and head out if I want to get any extra footage. And so, you know, simply buying multiple batteries is 
is probably one of the most effective, but you know, you do have to spend a little bit more for a smart battery, which can be a relatively expensive part of the drone package. So um, yes, just buy extra batteries. That's an easy way to extend your flight time. And finally, if you want to extend your flight time, fly in low wind conditions if you can, and also just don't be aggressive while flying. Change your EXP settings so that the smaller movements, the initial movements on the joysticks don't result in such a large movement. That will help not only smooth out the drone uh, flight, but also help you sort of collect more cinematic footage, which a lot of people want as well. Um, and yeah, just don't, turn it into sports mode unless you really need to. You can use other smart features on the DJI series drones. They have like tripod mode, they have cine cinematic mode, and they have other modes which really smooth out and really make the drone fly slowly. So if you're wanting to capture footage and you want to ensure that the battery lasts a long time while you're out and flying, you can decide to use those modes which does limit the maximum top speeds and how responsive the drone is to uh, different joystick movements and uh, camera movements as well. Well. So try those modes and hopefully you'll be able to improve your flight time. Um, and ultimately, like I said, if you're in doubt, buy another battery. So there we have it. There are all the things that limit the flight time of a drone and what you can do about it. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that list and I shall see you in the next video. Happy drone flying.